Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers from St Peter's Church, Hipsley. An opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the light of this new day. May we spend its hours in the freedom of your service, that when evening comes, we may again give you thanks. Direct and help us in every part of our lives. That our tongues that we speak no false or angry words. Our actions that we may do nothing to shame ourselves or hurt others. Our minds that we may think no evil or bitter thoughts. Our hearts that they may be set only on pleasing you. Lord, Keep us in your love through this day, through our Je Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And our first Bible reading continues reading from Psalm 119 and beginning at verse 33. So Psalm 119, verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts. Preserve my life in your righteousness. Amen. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I'm going to hand over now to Peter for our second reading and his reflections on them. Good morning. Do you know someone who's filled with the Spirit of God? How would you know? Would it be someone filled with wisdom? Someone filled with knowledge. Someone filled with understanding. But how would these gifts be shown? Would we see, expect a great preacher with a great sermon? Someone leading inspiring worship. Incisive exposition of God's word and spiritual wisdom. Well, let us hear what the Lord says about this and how we would recognise some spiritual gifts. And I'm actually reading from Exodus. Exodus 31, verses 1 to 11, in a very literal translation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and here's where it gets a bit surprising, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and in silver and in bronze and in cutting jewels for setting and in carving wood to work in all manner of workmanship. And indeed, I have appointed with him a holy of, son of a Hishamath of the tribe of Dan. 
and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted. I have put wisdom that they make that they may make all that I have commanded you. The tabernacle of meeting, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and its utensils, and the pure gold lampstand, and with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all its utensils, and the laver, and its base, and the ministry garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister as priests, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded, they shall do. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that is a very surprising list. No mention of preaching, no mention of healings and miracles, no mention of pastoral gifts and music. Mind, they come into other places of scripture. But let us look at the gifts of the Spirit of God that have been given to Bezalel and Aholia. First of all, the gift of artistic design. You know, I'd never thought before that being like Charles Rennie Mackintosh could be a gift of the Spirit of God. Mind, if you look at the life of Lilius Trotter, you'll find she had that gift too. Then there's metalwork, the ability to work in gold, silver, and bronze. Note, as a historical fact, it doesn't include iron, for we're still in the Bronze Age. We haven't yet moved into the Iron Age. The ability to work in precious stones, to work in wood. Now, does that mean that to make all the articles for the tabernacle and the furnishing of it requires the Spirit of God? Yes, it does. And does this mean that the gifts of weaving and tailoring the special clothes for priests to wear when they're at the service requires the Spirit of God? Yes. Then there's the special anointing oil in verse 11. And the incense that is burned to give us pungent smell. To make that, does that require the Spirit of God? Yes. And in the previous chapter in Exodus 30, the perfumed oil was to be specially made and only used for that one purpose. And the incense was not just to be any old incense. It was to be specially made to a special formula and only used in the tent of meeting. See Exodus 30, 34 to 38. Only the very best and the very special is good enough for God. Now this takes a bit of getting used to, doesn't it? To think that all these craft, gifts and skills were due to the Spirit of God. But I thought it was only Moses and Aaron who had gifts of the Spirit of God. No. 
others did as well. But let's press on to the New Testament. You remember there was Zechariah who went into the temple to offer incense and was met by Gabriel who told him his wife would give birth to a son, John, in Luke 1, 5 to 23. He must certainly have been wearing priestly robes made specially for the job. Did the person who made them need to be filled with the Spirit of God? Yes. And then there was the incense maker, taking equal parts of gum resin, onicha, galbanum, and pure frankincense. None of this second grade frankincense for the incense of the temple. Together with a pinch of pure salt, and all ground up and put into a vessel labelled sacred. Well, I didn't know what made a most holy incense before now. Did you? It's all in Exodus 30. 36. Did the person who did that need to be filled with the Spirit of God? Yes. And as we think that the person who made the robes of wool for the priest needed to have the Spirit of God, what about those earlier in the chain? Those who looked after the sheep that gave the wool? Perhaps they were around Bethlehem. Mind, bringing this up to date, does that mean that Mr C who made the portable lectern for Wynyard's family service, was filled with the Spirit of God to do it? Yes, it does. And there was Mr P, who put that new oak front on the pulpit at St Peter's Church to make it much larger for the Bibles to be put on. Did he need to be filled with the Spirit of God? Yes, he did. Well, that was mean that Mrs V, who produced that new frontal for the Lord's table and completed the Peter banner, needed God's spirit to complete the task? Yes, she did. And that expert in stained glass, Mr T, did he need the Spirit of God to design and complete the Holy Spirit window? Yes, he did. And now comes the awkward question. Do you have craft gifts that you are prepared to use for the work of God? If the answer is yes, and you use them well to God's glory, you too will be like Bezalel and Aholia. You too will show that you have been filled with the Spirit of God, and people will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven as Jesus commented in Matthew 5, 16. So may we all use the gifts we've given, we've been given for God's service this day and always. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. We come now to our time of prayer. So let us pray. Let's first give a prayer of thanksgiving for those 
who have given and used their talents for the glory of God within our church. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give gifts to your people, that they might use them to benefit others and to bring glory to your name. We thank you for all those that Peter has just mentioned who have sought to give gifts that will honour your name in our church. We pray that you may continue to bring your people forward in giving their gifts, whether through actually making something or gifts of sitting by somebody or listening to someone or preaching your word or leading worship. Lord, all these gifts come from you and we thank you for them. So may our church continue to bless others as we seek to use those gifts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come now to the intercessions. So we pray first of all for those in authority. Mm. Moment for us to think of any that we know who have authority, whether it's locally or, in, or nationally or even internationally. So let us pray. Living God, you call us to pray for our readers, to remember those set over, over us. So we pray now for all those in positions of authority. For members of parliament, both in government and opposition. For those in local government, remembering our local representative, Juliet Brunner. Mm. We pray, Lord, for our Queen and the royal family. Thank you for the example that many are giving at this time to support others in need. We pray for those in the police force with the difficult jobs that they have to do at times. Mm -hmm. For those in the legal profession. For all those involved in education and industry in whatever capacity. Lord, support these people in their work, especially at this time of difficulty and stress due to the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for the church. Lord, we pray for all the leaders in our church, for our Archbishops, Justin, and the new Archbishop of York, for local bishops John and Martin, for archdeacons Nicky and Robert, our parish clergy Garth and Ian. Lord, give to them the wisdom and insight they need at this difficult time. Grant them vision and discernment, a living knowledge of your presence and a daily sense of your guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray now for our world. And let us remember parts of the world that mean special, that are special to us, or for which we have a particular concern. Heavenly Father, we bring our world before you this morning. We thank you for all that is good and wholesome in it especially the beauty of your creation. Forgive us when we fail to care for it as we should. Forgive us too when we fail to respond to the needs of others. And we would remember, Lord, this morning, the leaders of the nations and pray that they may seek the good of their people and seek your wisdom to know how to help, especially in this particular time of need. Mm. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
we come now to pray for the needy. But a moment of silence while we give thanks for those who are seeing God answer their prayers in a positive way. We think of all those whose illness is abating, for those who've recovered from COVID. And we give thanks for that, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we know there are still many who need you. And so, Father, we bring before you all those who are in any kind of need. And again, thank you for the answers to our prayers we've already seen. So we pray, Lord, for those who have been let down by loved ones. We pray for those wrestling with depression as a consequence of the lockdown or for any other reason. We pray for those who are unwell at this time. We pray for those who grieve the loss of a loved one. We pray for those who face an uncertain future as a result of the lockdown with a loss or potential loss of employment. So many in need, Lord, so many needing you. We pray that you might reach out and touch their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us bless one another as we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. It has been a privilege to share with you this week our morning prayer. We thank you for joining us and we trust that God has been able to speak to you, whether through our words or through some other means. Remember, at half past ten on Sunday, there is our regular Sunday worship slot. And then starting again next week at ten o'clock, morning prayer. So we ask that God will bless each one of us in the days and weeks ahead. Amen. Amen.